chapter 4 Romans chapter 4 verses 18 through 25 Amen Father God in the name of Jesus we ask you right now just to touch our hearts touch our minds touch our ears so that we can hear the word of God tonight Lord God we ask you that our ears would be seasoned to hear that which the spirit of the Lord has to say to us tonight God let us be attentive let us be gatherers of the seed of the word let it be planted in our hearts that it will produce much fruit in the name of Jesus amen amen, amen. so let's see who can go back with me for uh, a little bit uh, Miss Diana Ross huh <laughs> Somebody said, I know you didn't play that song in church. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Miss Diana Ross, she was an original diva. Amen. Amen. She sang the words to this classic hit. She said, if you need me, call me. <laughs> no matter where you are, no matter how far, just call my name. I'll be there in a hurry. On this you can depend and never worry. I may not be able to express the depth of love I feel for you, but the writer put it very nicely when he was away from the one he loved. He sat down and wrote these words. No wind, no rain, no winter's cold can stop me. Y'all know it. Oh, baby, <laughs> baby, if you're my goal. <laughs> She said, I know you must follow the sun wherever it leads. But remember, if you should fall short of your desires, remember, life holds for you this one guarantee. You'll always have me. Ain't no mountain high enough. Ain't no valley low enough. Ain't no river wide enough to keep me from you. Now, Diana may have been singing about a man, but she may not have realized at the time that there is faith in this song. Could any of us perhaps maybe be able to make these statements of our love for Jesus? Oh, come on, somebody. No wind, no rain can ever stop me, Jesus. My, my Jesus, because you're my goal. Hallelujah. Ain't no mountain high enough. Ain't no valley low enough. Ain't no river wild enough. Nothing can keep me from you. I wondered if you'll let me talk to you for a few minutes tonight. Ain't no mountain high enough. If I had a subtitle for this message tonight, it is Against All Odds. Make Daddy Proud. <laughs> Against All Odds. Make Daddy Proud. I'm just guessing that there are some people in here tonight that are really concerned about making God happy. Anybody in here concerned tonight about making God happy? I mean, is there anybody in here tonight that wants God to be unhappy with them? Uh, no, I don't think so. I didn't think so. And that's probably not the position you want to be in is having God being unhappy with you. 
And tonight I'm going to try to make this as plain as possible for you because I'm sure you all want to know how to make God happy. So how do we do it? How to make Daddy, our Heavenly Father, happy? Hebrews 11.6 tells us that without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. <laughs> diligently seek him. No wind. No rain. No winter's cold shall keep me. Uh from him if you're going to live a life that is pleasing to God hear me tonight notice the verse doesn't say without living a life of doing all the right things did you hear me w without memorizing all the important scriptures uh, or it, it didn't say without making sure you never say another curse word mm. it says without faith it is impossible to please God. You cannot live a life that is pleasing to God without faith. I guess it's a good thing that we're studying faith this month, yeah? Uh, 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 so what is faith? What is faith? Hebrews 11.1 1 describes faith as the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Faith is our raw ability to believe in that which we do not have tangible proof of. That which we cannot see, hear, taste, touch, or smell. That which we cannot perceive in our natural ability. It is our raw ability to believe that God is, even though I cannot naturally perceive him. Even though I cannot see God, I believe by faith that God is. Faith is a raw ability that surpasses the senses. Are you hearing me today? It is a spiritual gift that everyone has. Somebody say, I got, I got it. I got it. Romans 12 and 3 says, For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. We all each have the necessary measure of faith given to us by God. So don't get it twisted. God has already given you exactly what you need to live a life that is pleasing to him. Right. When the disciples asked, why could they not cast out the spirit that was afflicting the young boy? Jesus said in Matthew 17 and 20, because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if ye have the faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say to this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove. And nothing, somebody say nothing, nothing. shall be impossible to you. Nothing shall be impossible to you. If you got just this much faith, mustard seed, one day you need to go to the grocery store. And go look at how small a mustard seed is. Just go look at it. And Jesus said, if you just have, it is not even, really. I can't even show you because my, my, my fingers are fat. I can't really even show you how <laughs> big they are. All right. For, for us to begin understanding what faith is and how it works, we need to look at the origins of faith. So we will look at who the Bible describes as the father of faith. Okay? The father of faith in the Bible 
Anybody take a wild guess? A wild guess of who the father of faith is? Abraham. Abraham. Abraham, whose original name was Abram, came from a place called Ur. You are Ur. Ur of the Chaldeans. His daddy's name was Terah. Terah took Abram and Lot as far as a place called Haran, where they settled. So evidently, God was speaking to Terah as well, but maybe Haran was as far as Terah wanted to go. Hmm. Terah was only willing to go so far with God. It was there in Haran that God instructed Abraham to leave Haran and go to a place that God would show him. And this is where it all begins. God begins to speak to Abraham for the first time, but not just speak to him. God tells him to leave everything that he was accustomed to and go to a faraway land that God would show him. Okay, but I, I, I want you to take a minute here and put yourself in Abraham's shoes for a minute. Think about it. It doesn't really say how God spoke to Abraham. It doesn't really say how God communicated with him. Yet, somehow, Abraham is aware of God speaking to him. So I want you to imagine, all of a sudden, something or someone that you've never talked, that's never talked to you before, and I'm assuming that you can't see them, <laughs> begins to speak to you. Uh, and they tell you to move out of your house, move out of your apartment, and just start walking. <laughs> and I'll tell you when you get to where you're supposed to be going. Okay, so I want you to, okay, you leave in your warm bed, your refrigerator with your food in it, and your uh, air conditioning and your lights and your comforts of home based on a voice that you heard. Not even anybody that you could see. Didn't nobody come knock on the door. They just told you. This is how it was for Abram. And I don't know about you, but there's not a lot of people these days who would be able to do that. But yet, there are those who are indeed willing to obey God in this way. Are you, is the question. Are you willing to obey God? And I remember God speaking to me some years ago about coming to Texas. And I was like, uh-uh, no way. I didn't know nobody in Texas. I was not coming down here. Uh, so I went to Seattle. <laughs> I went uh, totally the other direction because I went to Seattle because I wanted a man. I was not trying to do what God <laughs> was trying to say. But that's the trouble. The trouble is oftentimes we deprioritize the voice of God for the cares of this life. Things, comforts. The things I'm familiar with and what I want to do. The things that make me feel good. That's what we turn the voice of God off for. But Abraham left all that behind to follow the voice of God. And I need us to understand today, those in our congregation who live outdoors huh, are in a very unique opportunity. In many ways, you are even more equipped to participate in a life of faith that is pleasing to God than any of the rest of us. Because you don't have the cares of this life that inhibit you. If God says for you to go over here or go over there, you can just go. You don't have to worry about car insurance payments and you don't have to worry about light bills and house insurance and, and all those things. Or you don't have to call the job and see if I can call in sick so I can go do what God wants me to do. You're uninhibited. You can just go. I'm not worried about if there's enough gas in the car. 
I can just go. <laughs> we have to realize that when you're free of the inhibitions of the cares of this life, you can be a free agent for the Lord. And with a church like ours that's willing to help nurture the lives of people and provide food and clothing, do those individuals who are living outside can live a life that can make daddy proud. Living by faith. All of us can be filled with purpose every day and not filled with the depression and empty headedness the devil wants to fill our minds with and oppress us with. No, not just homeless people wandering the streets, going from place to place. God's free agents. Unique opportunity to be detached from the world systems so that we can fulfill the plan of God in the earth. Talk about being in this world but not being of it. <laughs> For anyone who is living outside, and I don't like to say homeless because God created this earth and we all live in it. But even if you may be on your way to living outside, you might be asking, oh God, why is this happening to me? <laughs> and I say, praise the Lord. It's a good question. Why is this happening to me? We, we look at our circumstances. We, we say, oh, woe is me. Why is this happening to me? Mm. But I say, it's a good question. And if you ask the question in faith, God. Why is this happening to me? I guarantee you God will answer you. And he will assign purpose to your experiences. While we're crying about it, God is saying is ordaining purpose. While we're hurting about it, God is assigning order and divinely setting up your life to fulfill the purpose of God in the earth. Hmm. Truth be told, pretty soon the way things are looking, any number of us could be living outside. <laughs> and having to trust God for everything. So learning to walk in faith is something that we all need to do. We need to be doing it. Sure, you could look at your circumstances, which by the way is the number one no-no when you're trying to Learn how to walk by faith. Looking at your circumstances is the number one do not do <laughs> when endeavoring to walk by faith. When you have your eyes on what you think your problems are, on your ability or rather your inability to solve them, yeah, all there is to do is to give in to hopelessness. Hmm. Many people go back to drinking and drugging and sex and just to make it through the day but by faith if you put your eyes on and give your attention to God's ability even in what seems like the darkest situations of life when you can't see your way when you don't know what's next you can know that whatever God has promised you he is also able to perform it It was at Haran. It was at Haran that God promised to bless Abraham by making him a great nation and that the entire world would be blessed through his seed. God was reaching out to Abraham and Abraham reached back. God was reaching out to Abraham and Abraham reached back. Abraham obeyed God and faith was born. Faith was born. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith is the kind of relationship with God that God is pleased with. A relationship, we just got out a whole month of relationship, okay? A relationship where God reaches out to us and we reach back. That's what God is pleased with. Now, as the years passed, Abraham and Sarah became concerned that they had not 
yet been given a son by God. They decided that it was only necessary for Abraham to father the child and that Hagar, Sarah's servant, could serve as the mother of the child in Sarah's place. Y'all remember the story, right? Where Abraham and Sarah were promised a child and it was just taking too long. <laughs> And they were old, and they didn't think it was going to happen. So they went to Sarah's handmaiden, which was Hagar, and Abraham laid with Hagar, and Hagar became pregnant, and she bare a son by the name of Ishmael. But Ishmael was not the son of promise. In fact, we are going through all kinds of stuff even today because of that decision. Amen? Amen. We're, we're at war right now because of that stuff. All right. Huh. At age 86, through Hagar, Abraham and Sarah had a son, Ishmael, and Ishmael was not the son of promise. At age 99, <laughs> 24 years after God first promised a seed for Abraham, God reaffirmed his covenant with Abraham and Sarah. And that next year, God promised they would have a son. And God commanded Abraham to be circumcised and to circumcise all the males of his household. Circumcision was to be the sign of God's Abrahamic covenant for generations to come. Thus, years after he was already declared to be righteous, on the basis of his faith, Abraham was circumcised. Now, we're just now getting to our text. Romans 4. Romans 4, ch chapter 4, verses 18 through 25. The, the Apostle Paul is teaching us about the faith of Abraham when he writes. Verse 18. Against all hope, Abraham, in hope, believed, and so became the father of many nations. Just as it had been said to him, so shall your offspring be. Without weakening in his faith, hear that, without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead since he was about 100 years old and Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet he did not waver, hear that, he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded, somebody say fully persuaded, that God had power to do what he had promised. Are you convinced? Are you convinced? He goes on to say, this is why it was credited to him as righteousness. The words, it was credited to him, were written not for him alone, but also for us, to whom God will credit righteousness for us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. He, Jesus, was delivered over to death for our sins, and he was raised to life for our justification. Abraham. Abraham took a chance. Hear me? He took a chance and believed God. He believed God when all the odds were against him. He believed God even though it meant going into some unknown territory. He believed God beyond his physical limitations. And because Abraham believed God, it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now, when we get into Bible study this month, we're going to take apart all these little 50 cent words, righteousness and justification and uh, 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 salvation and, and grace. And we're going to pull all this stuff apart. So we have a good working knowledge of what these words mean. Now, so let's see who remembers when we talk about righteousness, what are we talking about? Right standing with God. And so Abraham has obtained right standing with God by believing God beyond his natural limitations. It was counted unto him 
as right standing with God. Imagine that. Right standing with God even before there were laws. Hmm. Let me break that down for you. Even before there was thou shalt not kill. Uh huh. Even before there was thou shalt not bear any false witness. Even before there was man shall not lie with man as with womankind, there was faith and right standing with God through faith. And I need you to understand that today. Abraham obtained righteousness by faith, by reaching back to God when God reached out to him. I'm talking about against all odds, making daddy proud. Because check out what Paul says here in verse 23. He says the words, it was credit to him, were written not for him alone. <laughs> they were written for all of us who will believe in him who raised Jesus from the dead. And Jesus was raised from the dead for our sins. God went against all odds and opposition to reach out to you. I know the odds are against you being able to walk this walk out. I know the odds are against you to be able to rightly fulfill the purpose of God in your life. And I know other preachers have told you that you need to clean up your act before you can be pleasing to God. I know they told you that you have to stop being gay. That you got to get a job and put on a navy blue suit in order to be pleasing to God. But I'll tell you tonight, I'm sorry, they lied to you. Because what pleases God is when God reaches out to you, that you reach back. When you take a chance and believe that God sent his son to die on a cross for you and raised him up three days later for your sins. When you take a chance and believe God when he says, I have a better life for you, would you come away with me? When you take a chance and believe God when he says, come on and look at the scriptures with me, I want to show you something. When you take a chance and believe God when he says, I know you're gay, but I'm still going to use you to tell others about me. When you take a chance on God and believe when he says, I know your body is weak and in pain, and I'm supernaturally sustaining you. Will you believe him when he says it? When you take a chance and believe God when he says, I've called you to be a respected voice in the world that people will remember even though you're HIV positive. When you take a chance and believe God when he says, even though you're transgender, you're the one I'm going to use to confront false Christianity. We could go on and we could go on day in and day out talking about the odds that you're up against. We could go on day after day talking about how easy it is to sit back and stay in your comfort zone. We just go on and we get dressed and we go to the club and we have a drink and we drop it like a hot because that's just what the kids do, isn't it? That's just what they do, isn't it? I understand that there's a lot standing in between you and fulfilling your purpose. But there's more to your life than that. I need you to know that whatever's going on in your life, the question is, against all odds, against all odds, will you press on? Will you do what it takes? Will you trust God? Will you take a chance with God? Will you make Daddy, your Father in Heaven, proud of you? Hmm. Will you take a chance and believe God? Hallelujah. Will you reach back to God when he's reaching out to you? He's reaching out to you right now. He's reaching out to you right now. In fact, God's been saying stuff to many of you for several months. But you've given in to your own frailty. Your own perceptions of God and yourself. You say, I was so close to being obedient to God, but I messed up. I turned away and I went my own way. I chose my comfort zone and now you think God's offer is off the table. 
But I need to tell you tonight, God's offer is still on the table. His offer is still on the table, and it's not too late. It's not too late for you to reach back, and you're reaching back. It's what pleases God. I say tonight, let's all respond in faith to God tonight. Let's make Daddy proud. Let's tell God, ain't no mountain high enough. Ain't no valley low enough. No river wide enough to keep us from him. Let's press. Let's persevere. Because of how God didn't allow anything to come between us and him. Let's return the deed and not let anything come between us and God. No wind. No rain. No winter's cold can stop me. No lack. <laughs> no house. No boyfriend. No lover. No spouse. No joy. No pain. No sunshine. No ch 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 change. Whether I'm living in the big house or under the outhouse. Whether I'm gay. Whether I'm lesbian whether I'm bisexual, transgendered, straight, or confused. Your voice, oh God. Your voice is what I want to hear. Your voice is what I will respond to. Your will be done, oh God, in my life. Your will, not my will. I want to have a life of faith that is pleasing to you, oh God. A life that reaches back when God reaches out to me and I just say all over this room while we challenge ourselves to focus on who God is that you'd say this with me hmm. Lord Jesus I give you my life I give you my soul I live for you alone every breath that I take Every moment I'm awake, Lord, have your way in me. And against all odds, against all odds, I want you to be pleased with me. And ain't no mountain, ain't no valley, no river wild enough to keep me. I know we got a lot of stuff that society wants to hold up in between you and having this faith relationship with God. They want to hold up your money. They want to hold up your food stamps. They want to hold up your doctor visits. They want to keep you separated because of who you are, whether you're black, white, gay, straight, whatever it is. The enemy is using the systems of this world to put mountains up, to dig valleys, to keep you from living a life that is pleasing to God, one of faith. We've got to determine in our hearts, ain't no mountain, <laughs> ain't no world system. If they put me out tomorrow, mm, if they leave me tomorrow, oh God, if they turn their back on me, if they give me a bad diagnosis, oh God. If they tell me something's wrong at the doctor's office, ain't no valley. Mm. Ain't no valley. Ain't no valley low enough. All the chaos, all the family disruptions, all the arguments, all the vicious words that people say in my life. <laughs> ain't no river wild enough. Ain't no river wild enough mm. to keep me. So as you hear it, as you hear those lyrics from the original diva, even when you're getting uh, discouraged in your faith walk, just begin to throw your arms out in front of the mirror and say, ah, 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 to keep me from getting to you, Lord. Ain't no mountain high enough. 
Ain't no valley low enough. Come on, we're standing to our feet.